I can remember when I first started out in IT, more specifically when I got my first knock job, because when I started out in IT, I had a help desk job or whatever, but my first official working with Cisco equipment and everything, my family and friends would be like, or maybe just people that you just talking to, just ask what you do. And I really couldn't explain what I do other than say stuff like, yeah, just work with modems, make sure the internet is up. But there was really much more stuff that's involved because it's, it gets really technical, right? But I couldn't really explain that. And it just got me thinking of a quote that I heard the other day, which basically said that you don't really understand something until you're able to explain it to somebody else. And that's what I want to talk about today in today's video is that one skill that I learned and really developed that I believe got me in a position to where I was getting them network engineering offers just from the, the opportunities that it provided. And that one skill is just going to be like documentation slash I'll say developing processes. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you want to know how to develop this skill, if you want to know more about what I mean, how this skill can help you as a network engineer, then definitely lock in with this video to the end because I'll be sharing just an example of a process that I was involved in creating for checking connectivity to a server but from a Knox perspective as far as the Knox responsibilities and everything that was network related that we needed to do to deal with that network component of a server. Also, if you're feeling this kind of content, I appreciate everybody for subscribing, who's ever subscribed. If you're new to the channel, I upload these videos every week and um, I'm just trying to share as much information as I can be a service to you to just help you develop if you're a beginner or if you're existing in your IT and career and you're just trying to level up I'm just trying to share from my experience so definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content that I'm dropping all right to start this off let's go ahead and talk about documentation and processes and why they're even important so as a beginner like my first one to three years when I was working for our MSP. Our MSP was a small MSP at the time. We managed, which is a managed service provider, and we managed anywhere between, I'd say 15 to 30 different clients. And these clients are mid to large size enterprise level businesses. We're talking about just those big businesses that you see out there, anywhere from Coca-Cola to Office Depot. Uh, name a couple of the networks that I've worked on. The whole point about what I'm saying is documentation is going to be important if you work in that kind of environment where you're supporting many different clients or even if you're just supporting one specific client and their environment. Having that documentation is going to just make you that much better as a network admin when you know that this server is in the data center and it's connected to this switch and this is why it functions and this is what it's being moved here and there and a process to troubleshoot it if there's some kind of reoccurring issue. These things are important because that right there just increases your knowledge of the networking environment. It's going to reinforce your knowledge of your beginner or your novice level knowledge of computer networking with the CCNA. You're going to start bringing that reality to what that theory was, right? You're gonna see it in the real world. And that's all gonna come from documentation. Now, when you work as a network admin or in a knock, you don't have to document things, right? This is all on you. You can just sit there and follow processes because management level and everything, um, that's how business is structured, right? They're gonna have processes for you to work. That's how businesses run, that's, that's how they, the only way it's a system it has to run off of some kind of process so if you're not going to develop a process one will be developed for you to follow and you could just sit there and follow but that's the difference between professional and amateurs right professionals are people that create right and that's what a professional does they create things and then you got your amateurs and those are the people that are competing and you're just competing for your job or just competing to just keep your job right by just learning all the processes. Or you can step your game up, increase your knowledge, and start documenting things 
you know, nothing against documenting that you learned something today when you were troubleshooting a wireless connectivity issue in a specific environment and you documented it and you put a nice process together to say, hey, I did all of these steps and at the end, after I power cycled it, I um, was able to understand that we need to replace these things because the LED lights, uh, the specific uh, L sync and I seen that they all lit up this way and that, and then I called Cisco Tech and they said these need to get replaced. So I have a process to follow now. And I'm just coming off, that's not something real, but that's just something that I came off the top of my head. But these are things that you can do. And that's why it's so valuable for you to even be documenting anything or creating process. It gives you that experience or that wisdom that you need, the, the street smart stuff, right? The stuff that the book's not gonna teach you. And it helps you combine the stuff that the book teaches you with that experience. So your knowledge plus your experience, I've said it before, that's what's gonna equal your wisdom. Hopefully all of that made sense to you. The second thing that I want to talk about why this skill is so important and why I believe this is the skill that got me to network engineering level is because it really showcases that I understand um, networking concepts and I have a deep understanding of the networking concepts. I don't go just at surface level and how I'm able to show that is by applying the, the documentation and creating these processes to different kind of networking issues that I come from wireless to stuff that happens in the data center um, to and stuff. Just being able to apply the knowledge to create processes or to document anything that I come across, that shows that you're able to communicate that to people that are non-technical and technical. And again, that just goes back to what I said. You're not gonna be able to understand something fully until you can explain it to somebody else to where they understand it. I know how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I understand that, but can I explain it to a five-year-old to where they understand it? Or better yet, an adult. So maybe a five-year-old might not understand it, but um, get about it, better yet, an adult should be able to understand under normal circumstances, of course, just like if I was able to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich or if they're able to make it, they should be able to tell it to me and communicate to me the directions or a process or provide me some documentation to where I can make my own peanut butter and jelly sandwich to where I understand it. And then again, I can do that and I can share that information on as well. All right, the third and final reason why I believe documentation or creating processes um, your company as you're trying to grow and you're trying to get to that network engineer level or you're trying to reach a six figure salary. Why I believe that documentation is, is definitely one of those key skills or major skills that you need uh, to make that jump is because at the network engineer level, I am in my current role, I am getting asked to create processes pretty much as a regular basis. So at a network admin level, I'm pretty much tasked with working tickets. And I spoke about this in the network admin versus network engineering video. If you didn't check out that, check out that video because I go more in depth and detail about what the roles are. But as a network engineer, you want to document um, because sometimes uh, the doc may need some documentation and they can't come up with the documentation because there are too many tickets or whatever. So, or processes. And since I understand things at a deeper understanding the network and knowledge my team my employer my boss whatever they look to me to develop those documents or those processes and since i'm already conditioned to do that as a network admin because i was doing that when i was a network admin not even knowing that i was developing this skill um i'm tasked with creating a document or a process it's not the first time i did it so it's something that i can just the template for or something or I can pull from my experience and just throw one like hey I already remember how we used to troubleshoot T1s or serial connections or whatever I could just go through a one note or wherever I have it saved in the cloud and just pull it a document down for F5 load balancers I got documents for that so it's like being able that's where you create your value that's where you're a network engineer because you have so much experience and you have these documents and processes you're gonna have to do it anyways when you get to that level so that's why i really believe and think that this is one of those key skills that you need to get to that next level
All right, hopefully y'all can see that. And what I got pulled up here is this Knox server issue troubleshooting. So this is what a troubleshooting document or process looks like. So this was developed because the server team for a particular client that I was working for in the MSP uh, server team kept saying, oh, it's the network. This is why the server is not has lost connectivity and um, just started becoming the theme to just even if there was some kind of uh, done to the server, some kind of patching, any kind of maintenance done to the server, following any kind of changes or anything that changed with that server, if it didn't connect to the network after they made the change, they would immediately just put in a ticket and escalate with the NOC team or the network team and saying, hey, the network is, there's something wrong with the network, even though none of the networking equipment had any kind of changes done to it. There was no kind of maintenance being performed during their change window, during their time to maintenance their server. They would just always blame the network team. So um, the network team I was working on, our director or whatever came down and sat with all of us and just helped us develop a process that helped us to isolate the issue to the server having to be rebooted or they needed to provide more details. So let's just go through a little bit of these things and maybe working or not, maybe you can start developing your own process, you know, and pick this one apart and develop your own template for moving on in the future. So initial layer one, when did the issue begin? Just hit them with a whole bunch of questions. What's the severity of the in incident? Is there any kind of impact by this server being down? Is there just how many people are being affected is is all of the employees of this business affected or is it just two right because these what are going to determine how this process is going to go and you need this process to keep everybody honest because people are going to say there's fires and you need to put them out when this can wait till tomorrow if you ask me right if only two people are affected and there's a server down because you made a change we can start talking about this tomorrow there's no sense of urgency because you done messed up right there's no sense of urgency on my part. Now we could start saying, is the router up and up? Is the switch physically powered up and up? Is the server physically powered up and wired to the network switch? What's the IP and the MAC address of the service? The, the, does anyone know the switch or location where these servers are connected to? What's the host name of your server? Has the server group, has the server group even been engaged? Your, your team to provide confirmation and NIC card integrity, maybe your NIC card. I want some logs to help determine the problem or corroborate the validity that this is indeed a network layer three issue. Then you got layer two and layer three troubleshooting. Um, you're looking at VLAN, link state, speed and duplex settings. If the problem still exists, this is the bottom line. If it still exists, then let's go ahead and escalate this to the next level and let's get and all of this process this escalation should take place within 90 minutes so if you're spending more than an hour and a half going back and forth getting answered to these questions and troubleshooting you need to have gathered as much information as possible and then just shot it up to and escalated it to a manager or to another tier of technical support which would come to me like a tier two level engineer to where I can say, okay, we got IP addresses, we got Mac addresses, and <clears throat> we got logs to look at, and we got all these different things to start isolating parts of the network to start being able to move toward a resolution instead of just spinning our wheels on it. So hopefully this document makes sense. Hopefully you guys can see just like a rough draft. Um, this is an older document. I didn't, this is a throwback. I done definitely got better at developing documents, but I still, I pulled this out because it just reminded me, this is like like years old now, so it just reminded me of where I started and hopefully by sharing it, somebody else can clean something from it as well. All right, thanks everyone again for joining and sticking around this long. If you did, definitely thumbs up the video so that I know that you liked it so I can start creating more content around this. If you didn't like it, don't thumbs up the video and I won't create more stuff like this. But if you like just coming and tap in with your boy definitely subscribe because whether or not i'm going to just be dropping videos i'm uploading them every week so i'm trying to stay consistent and upload these videos every week for y'all and i just want to leave y'all with this make sure that 
if you're a beginner, if you're a rookie in this and you just got a CCNA job and you're working in a knock or something and just just start working on documentation ask management if you can work on documentation if you can help out because these are the things that's going to get you to that bag again this is for people that are trying to get to that six figure bag maybe not everybody listening to this wants six figures maybe that's okay for them i'm just saying this is if your goal was that if you're a beginner these are ways that you can move to that um and if management can't find a start developing your own processes if you see somewhere where there's a process that because you're in the trenches as a network admin or working in the knock, you're in the trenches, you really know the heartbeat of the network, you know what's going on. So start developing your own processes and, and give it to them. And if they don't want to implement your process, that's fine. But at least you're trying to create more value with yourself. And maybe the next company might see that value. And that's where you're going to get that significant jump in pay. So hopefully all that made sense. If you like it, definitely subscribe and, and just tap in with your boy and I'll catch y'all next week on the next video. Holla at me. Peace.